This is problem 1517. It's on page 666. The belt sander shown is initially at rest. If the driving drum A has a constant angular acceleration of 120 radians per second squared counterclockwise, determine the acceleration of the belt at point C and at the workstation D two seconds after the sander has been turned on. Okay, so there's a figure on that page I would recommend that you reference. But let's uh, write down essentially what's given. That is that the initial angular speed is zero. The acceleration of A is 120 radians per second squared counterclockwise. And A is the, the lower drum. Um, we're given that two seconds have elapsed and we're supposed to find uh, the acceleration of C and the acceleration of D at that particular time. Now if you look at the figure you'll notice that D is at the workstation. So at D the acceleration of point D is only going to, have, going to have a tangential component whereas at C, C is at the top of the upper wheel. And at the top of the upper wheel the belt will have a tangential acceleration and a normal acceleration towards the center of wheel B. Um, and so that's why there will be a difference in why these two are uh, requested. Now if you think about it, the tangential acceleration at C would be the angular acceleration of A multiplied by the radius of C. And I'm using um, the angular acceleration of A because that's what's given. But the angular acceleration of A and of C would be the same because the two wheels have the same uh, radius. They're both two and a quarter inches in radius. And so the tangential acceleration of point C is pretty easy to come up with. It's 120 radians per second squared multiplied by two and a quarter inches. Plug all that in your calculator. It's 270 inches per second squared. There is the linear or the tangential acceleration of C, which by the way would also be the tangential acceleration of D, at least in magnitude. Because notice that they're both points along the belt, and so the tangential acceleration of any point on the belt has to be the same, otherwise the belt would stretch or would shrink. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and write down the acceleration of point D very easily, because it does not depend on time. The acceleration of point D uh, has, as I said, only a tangential component, and so here's the magnitude of that tangential acceleration, but what direction is it? Well, if you look at the figure, you'll notice that the acceleration being counterclockwise means that point D is moving down and it's moving faster and faster. And so if we set up a uh, coordinate system as is usually done in the standard sense, then the acceleration of point D would be in the negative um, J direction, and it would have units of inches per second squared. So there's the, the vector acceleration of point D. The vector acceleration of point C is going to be a little bit different though because not only does C have a tangential acceleration like D does, but point C has a normal acceleration. Now we have to be a little bit careful here because point C is at the top of uh, wheel B. And so this tangential acceleration we just computed is right there. There's ATC, whereas for D, ATD was down just because of the nature of the belt. But the normal acceleration uh, for point C is a component that we haven't computed yet. Why? Well, notice that the normal acceleration of point C would be equal to the radius of C multiplied by the angular speed of C squared, but we don't know the angular speed of C. Now the angular speed of both C and D uh, are the same, excuse me, not of D, of A and B, of the two wheels. The angular speed of the two wheels is the same, and I should have said, should have said this is a wheel B, not a point C. Um, and so we can write that the angular speed is just the initial angular speed plus alpha T. And so um, this is pretty straightforward because the thing starts from rest and we know alpha is 120 uh, radians per second squared. The amount of time is 2 seconds. 
and so this is 240 uh, radians per second. That's the speed of the two wheels at two seconds. So now plugging that in, uh, two and a quarter inches of radius multiplied by 240 radians per second quantity squared will give us the normal acceleration of point C. In fact, when you plug all that into your calculator, you'll find that the normal acceleration is 129,600 inches per second squared. Now notice that the normal acceleration of C has to be down towards the center of curvature because C is following a path around this, this curved disk. And so we can write the total acceleration of point C as negative 270 in the I direction, because notice it's against the, the X coordinate. Um, and then let's see, also it's against the Y coordinate, so minus 129,600 in the J direction. Of course, the units for both these are inches per second squared. So notice that the primary component of acceleration of point C is the normal component as the point goes around that uh, disk.